G'day guys, Jeff from War here. Uh, we've got a local tournament coming up in two weeks and in typical me fashion I thought I don't really feel like playing any of the painted armies I have so I thought I'd uh, try and paint another one up just for this tournament. I thought this would be an excellent time to show you guys like yeah we've got a bit of a reputation at the club for being able to punch out semi-decent quality armies very quickly so I thought I'd take you guys through my process of how I actually quickly paint an army so it's yeah you score top points for a tournament. So for this tournament, I'm looking at running the Kingdom of Moria with Balin, Gimli, King's Champ. Um, and I've got a list at the moment without Floyd, but one thing I try and do is if I'm going to a tournament, I'll paint up an extra couple of models just to play with, just so I've got options as I test the list. So, uh, so yeah, I've got Floyd there and some Kazakh Guard um, and a couple of uh, Dwarf Archers, and they're just there so that I can put things in and out to try. So the first thing I've done is, yeah, obviously, base them, which is just a you know, aggregate sort of base. Uh, then I've primed the miniatures. The basing is not critical because of the paint I use for the bases is the primer in itself. So as long as all the plastic and metal parts are primed. Uh, so this, this army is yeah, pretty well ready to get stuck into batch painting. What I do before I paint any army, um, you know, no point going through and speed painting a whole army then getting to the end and going, oh, that looks terrible. <laughs> so what I do is I tend to do a test model first and this is just a model where, you know, I might paint in six or seven different ways until I'm happy with the result. But this is one that I've done last night. I've touched the armour up a bit. And I thought, yes, I would be happy with my entire army looking like that. Um, so what we'll do is we'll roll out that across the entire army as quickly as we can. Uh, in the process of painting that miniature, I make a pile of paints that I use to achieve it. Uh, because I've, yeah, I've got quite a collection and to go back and forth continually would just be an absolute pain. So at least now I know these are the paints I need to achieve that finish. And yeah, we can pretty well get stuck in. Uh, the other thing I look at when I'm doing these fellas, I identify which color is the most painful and probably prominent color on them. Uh, and that's I'll airbrush the entire army with that color and work out from it. And I'll yeah, the, the metal armor is both the prominent color and the most painful to highlight once the model's painted. So what I'll look at doing is I'll run, roll the armor out across the entire army and then come back and start picking out details and painting them individually. So what we'll do is we'll uh, yeah, go through and give these guys a little bit of a bath of metal and probably airbrush the base colour on while we're at it. So we'll get back to you with a bit of an update. Alrighty yeah, guys, the uh, airbrushing of the majority colour on most of the boys is done. Uh, I've gone for that sort of brassy bronze to achieve that, that armour colour there. So yeah, now that that's done, that's like, that's the speed of this process is that took me about 15 minutes and that's taken out like 75% of the base coating work on this army. Um, obviously opted not to do the rangers and the siege weapon because they have their own majority colors. So I'll go through and do them now. Um, probably should have said it before I started, but the color I'm using for these boys is an old GW gold, Belthazar gold. Uh, the beauty of the old GW golds is that they're more like a brassy bronze. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, that's what we've used on these boys. I'll then go through and do the cloth colour on the rangers. That'll be done using uh, steel grey. And finally, for the wood on the ballista, I'll be using Vallejo game colour, heavy sienna. So I'll go through and do the airbrushes on them. I might even I'll get straight into it, I'll do the bases. And for the bases, I'll use Vallejo game colour, heavy charcoal. And that's the last thing I do after I've done all those other colours. So we'll get stuck straight in and Get back to this with an update when the rest of the army's airbrushed. All right, guys, off the back of that, you can see that probably in the space of 40 minutes, maybe a little bit less, we have the entire army base coated and the bases are all fairly solid colors. There are a couple of areas where I've got a bit of overspray here and there, but honestly in this process that you don't tend to worry too much about that. It's just, yeah. Uh, some people probably say that metallics all over the model will change the tint slightly and then yes, it does. Uh, will these models ever look as good as someone who treats every model like a character? Probably not, with work they get close. Um, but yeah, this is this is the way I found it's the quickest to paint the army and to come out quality. So um, the good news is we're done with the airbrush at this point. So, so I can close everything up, back up and turn the aircon back on, which in Australia is most welcome. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is we'll bust out the brush 
Uh, like I said at the start, the metal colour is probably the most painful. So what we'll do now is we'll go through and do every single bit of metal on every model. So yeah, do another little time lapse, but it'll be a, uh, what I've found is with the colour, I'll give it a wash with uh, Druki Violet or Druchy Violet, however you pronounce it. Uh, follow that up with a sort of medium heavy dry brush of Fulgurite Copper. And finally a very light dry brush of Mithril Silver. And that'll give us that same nice shiny sort of bronzy brass look that we achieved on this dwarf. So we'll roll that out across the entire army and yeah, we'll come back to this with an update. Alrighty there guys, after uh, the wash, I actually broke my cardinal rule in speed painting during that uh, last segment of uh, time lapse. I was using a very small wash brush and I was going, oh this is going to take a while. Uh, so what I ended up doing was switching to as large of a brush as I could go to without apps, like it does swamp the middle a little bit, but it's still controllable. You can go back and move it around and yeah, so the entire army probably took me about another 10, 15 minutes to wash them all using that brush. And I've used a hairdryer to speed up the drying, but you can see already like, we're already getting a pretty damn good effect with that metal and purple shade. You can see that because of the gravity, it's sunk to the bottom and you're getting a nice little transition of still lustrous metal, but very, very dull up to very bright at the top. Uh, so what we're going to do now is, yeah, I'll give them another couple of minutes to dry because if you draw a brush with a wet model, you can very quickly with, <laughs> very quickly ruin any progress you've made. Uh, so make sure they're completely dry and then we'll go on to a dry brush with our mid-tone. So what I'm thinking guys, because my entire process is what I'm doing here repeated, I'll go into great detail about how I do this main colour and then I'll just go and walk you through this colour in great detail and the rest of the colours I'll just tell you what colours I'm going to use and run you through with a time lapse. So yeah, the next step after the wash is to give them a dry brush with their mid-tone. So we'll come back to this with a bit of a time lapse of that. Right, yeah, guys, back from the uh, dry brushing the mid-tone stage. Uh, as you can see in the video, I was using quite a large dry brush. Um, and that's why I'm doing the armor first, is it like those, those colors that are prominent on the model, you do not care about hitting the cloth and stuff like that, so you can be really, 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 like you can use really big brushes and get them all done very quickly. So that's the mid-tone. So we're just going to go through now and do a light dry brush with a mithril silver just to make that armour really pop. And we'll be getting stuck into some cloth and other goodies. So yeah, I'll put it through another time lapse for a couple of models and we'll get these boys' armours all highlighted and done. Alright guys, that's the final highlight on the armour, just that little bit of edge highlighting with the silver. Went a little bit heavier on some of them that I would have liked, but it is what it is. It's the sort of thing we can touch up once the army is fully done. In the timeline, as we've seen it, is with that final highlight, I made sure that the brush only really touched areas where the model would be hit by sun, or you know, it makes sense where the light would be going. Um, so yeah, from here, that's for what we're trying to achieve, that's the metal done. So we're going to move on to some blue cloth, and like I said, is so that process I used to do the metal, that's the same process I use to do every colour. Um, I won't go in through every step, I'll just give you a bit of a time lapse of each step. But the idea here will be to shade the blue with Drakenhof Nightshade, which is somewhere around here. This one here. So I'll be doing a shade with, uh, sorry, do a base coat with the same steel grey that we did on the Rangers on every bit of cloth on every model. I'll then give them a wash with Drakenhof Nightshade. Uh, the mid-tone dry brush will be steel grey once again, and then a final highlight of a mixture of ghost grey and steel grey. Um, and yeah, that'll achieve that same sort of space wolvesy blue that I've got on this guy. So we'll roll that in across the army and do the ranges and get back to this with a bit of an update.
Righto guys, that's the uh, blues done. As you can see, the army's starting to look pretty spiffing. Um, still a lot of work to go <laughs> just to get to that standard that I want to get to, but yeah, um, that's probably the two most painful parts of the painting process done. Now it's all just all nice little fiddly bits. So I don't think yeah, each of these processes won't take very long at all. And then we should have a nice tournament ready army. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do now is I've sort of had a look at it and the skin's probably the next thing I wanted to have a look at. So the exact same process. Um, I'll be using the extra opaque heavy skin tone into a wash of Reichland into a mid-tone of Ungor. And if I think so, think I need it, I'll mix a bit of Ungor with some Wraithbone or something and do some very selective highlights with that. So we'll get stuck in and do all the skin colours on these boys. Alright guys, the uh, skin colour's all done and dusted now, as you saw in those time lapses. Um, yeah, like, particularly the Dwarf Warriors where there's not too many other colours on them, they are really starting to pop. Definitely some work to do on those ranges and whatnot still, but yeah, they are definitely starting to come together. So, uh, we'll move straight along. I think, yeah, probably the next thing will be a bit of timber. So, yeah, we'll uh, do a bit of timber. For that we're going to use Heavy Sierra. Then a shade of uh, Agrax Earth Shade, and I'll have a crack with Scrag Brown, but I might adjust that recipe on the fly. Oh, the yeah, all the uh, wood panelling and uh, axe shafts and whatever else is all complete. It's starting to, yeah, like I said, it's starting to really come together. So uh, at this point here, we've got um, probably just a couple of finishing touches, three or four finishing touches. I'm not gonna film them all individually. Um, basically that same process I've used for everything else, I'm going to roll out to do the beards, the feathers on the arrows, and any cloth that'll bits and pieces. So, um, yeah, with the hair, I just try and split them into different groups of poses and give everyone a different hairdo just to give a bit of variation in there. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go through and do the little tidy up pieces. I still paint using the exact same process, but I'll go do all the little accessories and then the dwarves themselves will be done and will be ready to base. Uh, just for comparison's sake, I just thought, yeah, pull our test model out and we can see we're starting to get bloody close to it. So it shouldn't be too much longer. I'll do a little bit of work on the grey on the Ranger too. I don't think you you guys need to see that, but uh, like I said, this is the first time doing a hobby video. So if you just want in greater detail, just give us a yell. But like I said, that process I use is how I knock them out quick. And I think I've shown you that. So I'll go do all the little touch-ups now and I'll show you how I get a nice, quick, easy snow base that looks like that. I'll get back to you with an update. Righto guys, coming back, I've uh, yeah got all the dwarves to a stage where I'm pretty happy with them. Um, the heroes I'll put a little bit more work in after we finish basing them. Uh, but yeah, the general dog's body dwarves are actually starting to look really good. Uh, what I try and do is, I, whatever colours I decide on for hair, I split, split them into three even groups with multiple poses and then just go through and do that exact same batch painting method uh, on the hair. So in this army I've gone with black, grey, and orange hair dwarfs. And at the moment, because they're in the blocks that I painted them in, they stand out, but once they're all intermingled, it'll look really nice and diverse and colorful. Now you can see, yeah, the heroes are starting to come together. Like I said, once we've based them, we'll go through and do the bit more work on them, but they are really, like the army on the whole is really starting to pop. Uh, this next step though, it will just take it to the next level. Like, it's very easy to have nicely painted models using this method, but you see a nicely painted model on the base like that and it really detracts from it. So what we're going to do is a little bit of basing. Uh, so same method, um, I'll go through and make sure that the entire base is blocked in with heavy charcoal. Uh, the next step then, I would used to wash them, but like I said, this is a bit of a speed painting. So I'll be cheating a little bit or just be using contrast without wash. Um, so next one will be a somber grey, just a sort of semi heavy dry brush for that. Cause I'm going for a snow base like that test model. Uh, I tend to, you know, limit the uh, jump from your mid-tone to your final highlight sort of thing. So yeah, heavy dry brush for that, and that way the dark grey will be in the deepest recesses only. Uh, then finally, it will be a uh, light dry brush, semi-light dry brush with ghost grey, and that'll give it that really sort of cold rock look. And then we'll finish off with some uh, Vallejo 
uh, snow ground texture and a couple of uh, winter tufts. And uh, finally, most important step is uh, painting the rim black. I'll take a, it, take a bit of a photo for you of what the base looks like without the rim painted and you can see it just looks a bit silly. Uh, I always find that black gives you that really good defini uh, definition between the base and the texture on it. So I'll uh, set up a bit of a time lapse, we'll go through and do that and I reckon yeah, well, you'll be surprised how good it looks at the end of this step. But we'll get back to this with an update. Ladies and gentlemen, that'll uh, that sort of concludes getting the army to tabletop. Uh, another handy little tip for you is, is if uh, you want to sort of get some good contrast between what you're trying to look, sit your models on and look at them, uh, paper towels are a really good, cheap way to get that sort of white background so the models pop. So, yeah, they're not. I've got a little bit more work to do on the heroes yet before I take them to the tournament, but uh, yeah, that's probably. 24 hours or thereabouts of actual painting time. I took a bit longer than normal just because I was trying to film and whatnot. But yeah, I am particularly happy with how this army's come out. Um, the best bit is like some people, obviously this method I've used a lot of dry brushing. Uh, some people say that gives you a chalky finish. But if you ever get the, uh, you know, ever feel the need to make them, take them to that next level, it's as easy as going back in with glazes and you can actually get rid of that sort of dusty effect that dry brushing gives you. Um, but yeah, for what I'm after, they will absolutely do perfectly and I think, yeah, hopefully you guys picked up a few little tips and tricks along the way and I just wanted to sort of show you that you can get to a tournament with a painted army for minimal, not minimal effort, but yeah, if you put in a couple of solid days, you'll easily get to this standard and like I said, you can take it even further if you've got the time. So uh, next for me is to build a display board that these guys will be able to sit on and yeah, I'm Depending on how this video is received, I'll film it, and if this video is received fairly well, I'll uh, put that out next, a bit of a speed speed build on the display board. So, hope you guys enjoyed, and yeah, I'll run you through a couple of stills of a couple of models now.